Coming up in a show of appreciation, the Christian community of Our Lady of Fatima under the Divine Mercy Co Cathedral presents gratitude to their chief shepherd for aiding them in the roofing of their church building. A delegation visited the bishop earlier today. We also bring to you highlights of the current state of affairs concerning major diocesan projects targeting the 75th anniversary of the diocese in 2025. We measure up the rate of work done so far. And the global community today remembering an African son, anti-appetite fighter and former South African President Nelson Mandela. July 18th is an international day dedicated to his struggle and this year's theme is combating poverty and inequality in our hands. Those were our top stories, the news and details right ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is July 18, 2024. Thank you for joining us this day on Divine Mercy Prime. I am Samailin for presentation. Two delegations made a stop at the residence of the local ordinary for Boya this day. First, we begin with the diocesan executive of the World Apostolate of Fatima that visited his lordship Michael Bibi earlier this morning to update him concerning ongoing preparations in view of their annual national congress. The event is billed for July 24th, 2024, in the Diocese of Boya. Reverend Father Martin Gier with details in the upcoming report. The Diocesan Executive of the World Apostolate of Fatima, also known as the Blue Army, met this morning with the Bishop of Boya, His Lordship Michael Bibi, at his residence to update him on the level of progress and preparation with regard to the upcoming National Congress of the World Apostolate of Fatima. This is scheduled for Wednesday the 24th to Saturday the 27th of July 2024 and it will be hosted in the Diocese of Boya at St. Anne College and Holy Family Parish Newtown Limbe. The event will officially commence with a high pontifical mass on Thursday the 25th of July 2024 with over 500 devotees of the Apostolate nationwide expected to answer present. The World Apostolate of Fatima's National Congress Congress is an annual meeting of the members of this apostolate nationwide to converge as a family and evaluate themselves on the laid down objectives and to ensure that the message of Our Lady of Fatima to pray for world peace is put into a praxis. This morning we visited the bishop to update him on how far we have come the arrangement was our congress, national congress coming up the 24th of July to the 27th of July. It will be hosted at St. Anne's College, Linde, and delegates are expected from all over our country. It's a national congress. Yeah. We're expecting about six to five to six hundred members for the congress. The team for this year's National Congress of the World Apostolate of Fatima is praying for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, for peace in Cameroon and the world at large. Speaking with the prelate of the Diocese of Boya, the executive members of the World Apostolate of Fatima were better enlightened and encouraged by the Chief Shepherd on appropriate measures to be co-opted in order to guarantee a fruitful National Congress a few days to come. Worthy of note is the fact that during the Congress, national elections will be conducted, for it has been approximately three years since the last Congress was held in the Archdiocese of Douala. The upcoming Congress will be marked by various activities as one of the executives underscored. We have talks about six different talks linked to the theme. During this Congress, we shall be quiz competition, we shall have singing competition, the anthem of the WAF, we use it for competition from the different diocese's. Uh, there shall be other activities uh, that, like general discussion about how far we've gone with uh, the propagation of the mission of Fatima here in Cameroon. We're going to discuss that and see the way forward 
how we can also spread the message of Fatima in other dioceses that are not yet uh, having that. Then we'll have a, a candlelight procession on Friday night. We are going to have an adoration evening on Wednesday when the members arrive. Then on Saturday, there's a grand march in Limbe Town, where I did the statue of Our Lady. We shall do that awareness march to let Limbe know that Our Lady, the mother of Cameroon, is in Limbe. We are going to begin that march from community feel right up to the church and we'll have our closing mass that day. Being an opportunity for the members of the World Apostolate of Fatima to come together to pray and to propagate the message of peace, it will also be a moment for the members to commune together for one of the last messages given by Our Lady to Francisco, Lucia and Jacinta was for the world to build the church and come together in a spirit of an unquenchable communion. Listening to the words of wisdom and directives from the bishop, their spiritual father, the entire executive left with smiling faces, with a more optimistic and decisive spirit towards the realization of the upcoming National Congress for the World Apostolate of Fatima. Another group that stopped at the Bishop's House uh, this morning are Christians of Our Lady of Fatima Mission Station under the Divine Mercy Co-Cathedral. They went to express their gratitude to the Bishop for assisting them with the roof of their church building. The delegation also updated the prelate on the ongoing church building project. Aloysius Lekia was there and now tells us more. A delegation from the Our Lady of Fatima Mission Station under the Divine Mercy Co-Cathedral paid a courtesy visit to the Bishop of Boya to express their gratitude over the completion of the roof of the church building. The mission station, made up of mostly students who solely depend on their parents for finances, has been struggling with this project for a while, and when they presented their challenges to the Bishop of Boya, he supported them with the roof. Before now, the Christians have been battling with rain during masses and the coming of the roof is a big relief to the Christian community, reasons why a delegation paid a visit to say thank you to the Bishop of Boya for coming to their aid. So, uh, on behalf of the Christians of Malingo and the Christians of the Co-Cathedral Parish in general, we want to say uh, thank you to the Bishop of this diocese, Bishop Michael Dibi, for helping us and for making us proud. I tell you that the Christians are so happy because a few Sundays after we have put the roof, people can now worship God in a beautiful environment without rain. You know, this is the rainy season without rain actually uh, falling on them. So we thank him and thank him very, very much. Our mission to the bishop's house is to meet him and thank our Lord Bishop for the gift of that thing. And to also give some uh, complaint that we have at the level of the mission station that in future if we have to come back to him let him just accept us as Oliver twins we are thankful grateful for what he has given and then we'll come again maybe to beg for more after the roofing the mission station is gearing up to fit the windows and doors and arrange the altar as explained by the parish priest of the divine mercy co-cathedral the, the next phase of the project actually is uh, we are trying to put the protectors now and when we do finish doing the protectors we are going to do the doors we have three giant doors in that church and we once we put the doors then we do the altar in fact uh, we already have the blessed the, 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 the tabernacle with us at the moment and we are talk, discuss with the bishop that once we have we are sure of the security once we put the protectors and we do the altar and we also put the doors and are sure that we can now come to apply for the tabernacle to be to be installed so we hope that this can be done in the nearest future the christians are hopeful to become a eucharistic center in the days ahead and after discussing with the bishop they say they will follow all the necessary steps for the bishop to elevate them to a eucharistic center and as the lord bishop said when we are done with the doors and the window protector said there is a procedure that we need to follow for a tabernacle to be installed in that church so uh, when we do all what he has asked us to do I think we will give him the feedback. He has even promised to come and see how the roof looks like and with the uh, gable end that we have a problem with. 
by all the same he sent the technician who will come and see and then join the christian to tell them how they will want the format to take place the bishop in the course of the vc appreciated their efforts and revealed that the donation of the roof is a way to encourage and push the community to do more Let's talk Dalsasan projects now. Finishing works and renovations continue to go in in some main projects in uh, the Diocese of Boyer in preparation for the 75th anniversary of the Diocese and welcome of the Bishops of Cameroon come 2025. Our reporter Joseph Otop visited these project sites and now updates also with the level of work done so far. As the mothers of the church, the Catholic Women Association of the Diocese of Boya, in preparation of the Diamond Jubilee come July 24, 2024, during a thaw with their prelate on July 10th, visited some major diocesan projects to check the level of preparedness and also appreciate the good works of His Lordship Michael BB and his collaborators. Few days down the line, construction and renovation works of these diocesan projects continue to grow in leaps and bounds in preparation not only for the celebration of the Diamond Jubilee of the CWA women, but also for the 75th anniversary of the Diocese of Boya come 2025 and the welcoming of the bishops of Cameroon for the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon with the diocese being the host. At the Divine Mercy Co Cathedral, the wiring of light at the basement to give it a better view continues, the making of more benches for the Co Cathedral, as well as the tiling of the Adoration Chapel, is almost at completion, which in the nearest future will serve as a place for personal prayers to Jesus present in the consecrated Eucharist host. The multi-purpose hall, located at the premise of the Bishop Pius Awa Memorial Pastoral Center, does not remain indifferent to the progress of work at other diocesan projects, as the placement of ceilings on the roof has begun and cutting of the floor in preparation for future celebrations relating to the diocese and other events. As these projects continue to make waves in the diocese, the roofing level of the convent and chapel have begun, which will serve as a residence for the handmade sisters of the Blessed Virgin Mary and also an avenue for prayers. With hopes high and fingers crossed, these structures will not only serve a great deal to the Christians of the Diocese of Boya, but for all and beyond. Over to the northwest region now, the Presbyterium of the Archdiocese of Bamenda enter the fifth day of their annual retreat this July 18, 2024. This is taking place at the Pastoral Center in Bamenda Nkwe with the Bishop Emmanuel Badejo of Oyo Diocese in Nigeria acting as the retreat master. It has been a spiritually filled moment with talks, reflections, recollections and prayers. Details with Reverend Father Martin J. Spiritual retreats afford moments for reflection, prayer or meditation, introspection, stock taking and making of necessary amends for a brighter future. After a considerable period of work and relentless efforts of service in God's vineyard in parochia as well as other diocesan institutions, the entire presbyterium of the Archdiocese of Bamenda proceeds with the annual priestly retreat as they enter the fifth day this Thursday, July 18th, 2024. The facilitator of the retreat so far has been Bishop Emmanuel Badejo of Oyo Diocese from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This year's retreat is taking place at Paul the Seat Memorial Pastoral Center at Bamenda Kwe in the Metropolitan See of Bamenda. The retreat master, Bishop Badejo, had a key message to the priest of Bamenda, stay at your duty post. This has as complements the ability to be an agent of Jesus Christ despite the challenges the prelate indicated. My central message, if I may put it in other words, is stay at your duty post. What is the duty post of a priest? To be an agent of the mission of Christ, to be an agent, a servant of the mission of the church. No matter what the challenges may be, and no matter what the experiences may be, and no matter what the 
insinuations and uh, the views and perspectives that the priest may acquire, he must always put that under the guidance of the church so that he does not go astray. The church actually enriches our experience and equips us for the mission as the world changes. That's my main message. No matter what the difficulties are, Jesus is with the priest, the Holy Spirit is working in his church, and the church and the priest will not go wrong. Just as it is said, the voice of prayer is never silent. So too, the voice of the priest of the Archdiocese of Bamenda is equally never silent with such an enlivening moment of self-examination and prayer. The priest drew from the reservoir of the rich content in the delivery of the retreat master, the virtue of humility and a total submission of one's all to his legitimate authority and to God. The first thing is about humility. Humility. So the humility which he asks us to do is in the line of Jesus Christ, the humble servant who went to the cross. He came for a particular mission. And so we try to understand the mission we are called upon to serve the people of God. He made a wonderful statement, which Mother Teresa did. So whatever assignment is given to you, stay in it. Don't ask to leave, no. Stay in it. So I asked myself, should I stay where I am? People want big posts, many things. That's what priests go in for. But what about the humility of accepting precisely the job which the bishop has given to you? Secondly, the most inspiring thing is also said, when you put your hands in the hands of the bishop, what does that mean? It recalled my mind putting my hands in the hands of the Archbishop of Bagmenda, Paul Vesekov. It simply meant, as he told us, that you are giving your will to the bishop. You are giving your all to the bishop. You are giving your celibacy to the bishop. You are giving whatever talents you have for the bishop. He can play with it wherever he wants. Because the Holy Spirit is always there to guide him and to help him. As key moments of the retreat flowing from the observation of the retreat master, a commendation of the active liturgical participation through singing, prayer, and the presentations on the part of the priest during this retreat moment could not be overemphasized by the prelate. The united and hard-working Presbyterium of Bamenda looks forward to more spiritual strength and more dedication for service in God's vineyard as they prepare to conclude their annual retreat tomorrow, the 19th of July, 2024. Reverend Father Martin Jair reporting there. Now over to Mamfei Diocese. As July 24 draws near, the day for the peak celebration of the Diamond Jubilee of the CWA, Diocese of Mamfei continues with social activities to mark the celebration. These activities that range from fashion parades, ballet dances, cooking trainings, debates and games and many others all aim at showcasing their know-how in the social aspect of the celebration. The day saw its close with the start of the novena to the Immaculate Conception which is going to run for nine straight days. It is with our reporter Jamila Tutongta. <laughs> As the big day celebration of the CWA at 60 gradually draws near, CWA women across the different dioceses continue to put up the necessary work that will enable a successful celebration come June 24, 2024. The Catholic Women Association of the Diocese of Manthe took up the initiative on July 15th, engaging on some social activities such as fashion parades, ballet dances, debates, cooking trainings, egg and spoon race, just to name a few, all in the quest to showcase their know-how on the social aspects of the celebration. <laughs> Thank you. 
in an interview with some of the women, they expressed the joy of being able to see the 60th anniversary this year while expatiating on the various things they had the opportunity to learn during their social gathering that day. I joined CWA for Malcolm in 1992. We had a little man in Veronica Obi, and I did the traditional wrestling. By then, we don't get dances. I've been very, very happy before. I've been 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 very happy the equally took advantage of this gathering to caution the younger women who were in their midst. This I see down here, the teacher have to make soap. The teacher have to make soap. So they can't take it down since it's young girls day. Let the way, they don't learn how to do that until they can't do it. So one day when they don't do the dress, they don't dance in the way, they see the teaching as they do the dress, why? Then now we prepare with 60th anniversary and the activities that we can do and we can do and we thank God say at least me, I don't see at, at least 40 years to be Jubilee and not again at that would be 60 years and we will be very very grateful for God. We teach you how to do it. We teach you how to do it with your master for us. We know how to do it now we are going to as we celebrate this our this day, we don't, we don't first celebrate the Ruby Jubilee for Saturday. That year of 40 years, now we celebrate our 60 Jubilee, Diamond Jubilee. So I really be very happy to say, God is like me, to keep me alive, to tell me that I see the day ended with the beginning of the novena to the Immaculate Conception, which is going to run for nine straight days. Let's talk something else out of the church. In recognition of Mandela's extraordinary life and his enduring legacy, every July 18 is celebrated as Nelson Mandela's International Day to commemorate the achievement of the anti apartheid leader and to carry forward his legacy for a better future. This year's theme is Combating Poverty and Inequality is in Our Hands. The theme resonates deeply with Mandela's Mandela's lifelong commitment to social justice. The day was designated by the United Nations in 2009 to promote peace and freedom. Naresh Meh took interest on this International Day and compared the following report. The United Nations General Assembly declared July 18 the Nelson Mandela International Day where they recognized the former South African president's contribution to the culture of peace and freedom. The resolution sought to recognize Mandela's value and his dedication to the service of humanity and conflict resolution, promotion and protection of human rights and rights of children. Like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural and it can be overcome calmed and eradicated by the actions of human beings. To the President of General Assembly, Denise Francis, true freedom will never be achieved as long as poverty indefinitely lingers. He encouraged everyone to act urgently with courage and vision. Governments and individuals from all corners of the world to boldly redefine our collective journey and in realizing our shared aspirations towards a brighter, more inclusive, more secure tomorrow. Let us be the generation that rises to greatness. Let us all pledge to scrupulously uphold equal respect and treatment for every person, 
irrespective of their circumstances. Celebrated under the theme Combat Poverty and Inequality resonates deeply with Mandela's lifelong commitment to social justice. According to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the challenges of poverty and inequality persist and the gap between the rich and the poor widens and millions still lack necessities. We can choose to eradicate poverty, we can choose to end inequality, we can choose to transform the international economic and financial system in the name of equity, we can choose to fight racism, respect human rights, combat climate change and create a world that works for all humanity. Deputy Secretary of the United Nations and Chair of the United Nations Sustainable Development Group, Amina J. Mohamed, beckons on the Minister and members of the Assembly to recommit to their Sustainable Development Goals, the promise made at national level and follow the path made by Madiba as the choice are still made in their hands. An additional 23 million people were pushed into extreme poverty in 2022 and over 100 million people were suffering from hunger than just five years ago. For the first time this century, per capita GDP growth in the world's most vulnerable nations is slower than in advanced economies. I'm asking the ministers and everyone here to recommit to the SDGs and the promises made at national level. Let us match our words with our collective actions. Let us have the long overdue intergenerational partnership that goes beyond the conversations. And let us follow the path that was set by Madiba. Nelson Mandela died in December 5th, 2013, aged 95. He dedicated his life in fighting for equality, justice and reconciliation. His legacy continues to inspire South Africans, including others worldwide. Out of the country, Kenya's opposition group denies coalition talks with the government following a month of protests calling for the sacking of cabinet ministers over incompetence, corruption and more. And Ukraine and Russia have exchanged 95 prisoners each, set officials in both countries on Wednesday as part of a deal brokered by the United Arab Emirates being the 54th swap since February 2022. Get the details of these stories and more in the subsequent report. The prison swap between Ukraine and Russia was the 54th since February 2022 and came three weeks after the last exchange. The exchange was mediated by the UAE for the sixth time this year. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed the Gulf state's involvement, writing on Telegram that 95 members of its defense forces had been liberated from Russian captivity. The Russian Defense Ministry expressed its gratitude to the UAE UAE for its mediation efforts. According to the United Nations, most Ukrainian prisoners suffer routine medical neglect, severe and systematic mistreatment, and even torture while in detention. There have also been isolated reports of abuse of Russian soldiers, mostly during capture or transit to internment sites. Elsewhere, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni on Wednesday made remarks on migration and the energy crisis as she took part in the Trans-Mediterranean Migration Forum in Tripoli, Libya. Meloni stressed the importance of fighting against human trafficking, saying that there are people making lots of money using the desperation of the fragile persons around the globe, adding that the world cannot allow it, for these organizations are becoming very powerful but do not care about human rights and human beings. Libya is a major route, although deadly, for migrants trying to reach Europe by crossing the Mediterranean Sea from different parts of Africa. Migrants who reach the coast pay to board poorly equipped and crowded ships before they set off on risky sea journeys. Nonetheless, Italy is one of the main points of arrival on the other side of the Mediterranean. 
and Kenya's opposition coalition, led by its veteran leader Raila Odinga, has ruled out any possibility of a coalition with the government following the recent anti-tax protests that has led to at least 40 deaths. This follows recent meetings between the government of President William Ruto's coalition Oka and Odinga's Azimio La Umoja coalition that began last year. Protests began on June 18, calling for the sacking of cabinet ministers over incompetence, corruption and display of opulence while ordinary people suffered from a cost-of-living crisis. Recall that protesters stormed parliament on June 25 after legislators passed a finance bill that would raise taxes where police opened fire, killing several people. We've come to the end of this edition of Divine Master Prime, but before we go, a recap of our major stories. In a show of appreciation, the Christian community of Our Lady of Fatima under the Divine Mercy Co Cathedral presents gratitude to their Chief Shepherd for aiding them in the roofing of their church building. A delegation visited the bishop earlier today. We also brought you highlights of the current state of affairs concerning major diocesan projects targeting the 75th anniversary of the diocese in 2025. We measured up the rate of work done so far. And the global community today remembering an African son anti-apathite fighter and former South African President Nelson Mandela. July 18 is an international day dedicated to his struggle and this year's theme is combating poverty and inequality is in our hands. Many thanks for viewing that wraps up this edition of Divine Mercy Prime. Thank you so much. I have been smiling for presentation but do stay tuned to more amazing programs coming up tonight. On DMR TV, God willing, I'll be here tomorrow for another edition of Divine Mercy Prime. Bye for now.